Today, we got an OG grunge classic. Brand new music for 2023. We go anywhere from hardcore punk all the way to classical. George, Chris, sorry, no jazz or blues this time. Welcome to the Early Morning Sunday Show. And welcome. It's the early morning show with my co-host, Cat. He's got here early today. Yeah. Say hi, Cat. Meow. Uh, yeah. We're, we're, we're here to show some records and to have uh, Cat be a, a little pisser on me here. Okay, come on. Let's settle down. Time to show some records. Last week, opera. It was excellent. My wife, Patty. She enjoyed it. She goes, that was really good. You know, because they, they put it in English on top. And I was, I mean, it's two and a half hours. But, uh, you know, we stayed right downtown Detroit. Uh, you saw some scenes uh, from our from our room. Just, you know, we we're two blocks from the Opera House. Two blocks from Greek Town, which has a casino. So, a great time. Saw Xerxes. So, real quick, Xerxes from Handel. The king loves, a, Xerxes the king, he loves a tree. But he has to get married. So there's a noble woman he decides he loves. This noble woman likes his brother. Now, the friend of the noble woman also likes the brother. The brother likes the noble woman. But there's another woman that really likes the king, but she got banished. So she comes back as a guy to try to get the king. And a fun exudes. Uh, and then suddenly, toward the end, they're all going to kill themselves. Suicide's going to reign supreme. And then they find out, oh, I like you, I like you, I like you. And they live happily ever after. And they're Xerxes. Why do you, don't do that. So, yeah, there we go. That is, yeah, there it is in a nutshell. So, uh, good time. Love the opera. Had a great fun time there. And, uh, yeah, was happy. Um I, I used to be a member of the Detroit Opera, so uh, it, you know, just my travel has prevented that. So, great, great time. Okay, let's do. Um, first off, we did our second podcast last week. We'll be doing another one today. Uh, last week, would you stop it? No, man, you don't need to lick my face. This is a dog. I got bad breath though. I think the snot's coming back. All right, so. We, we did our second podcast last week on Pink Floyd. This week we're going to do it on um, uh, the High Price of Vinyl and Box Sets. The, the name of our channel is Two Guys Talking About Records. It can be found on Podbean. Podbean. It's a free, you can go in, it's free. It's Two Guys Talking About Records. Then there is a slash Vinyl Community Podcast. I put down a link last week. Obviously I screwed it up because it didn't work. I put out a link, link for Rod the Happy Hippie for his GoFundMe. For whatever reason, didn't work. I don't know. Um, so we'll try and figure some of that out. But tune into that. It, we're, I'm having a fun day. It's, it's half hour. We just keep it to half hour. And it's just... <laughs> It's kind of like this, except I'm talking with someone that knows what he's talking about. Then you have me, so what the hell? Okay. Oh, lordy. Um, very good time. Also, um, let's, let's, I'm going to do a few call-outs here. What? Well, yeah, I brought up my cup. So now, now you want to smell that, see? Yeah, uh-huh, the early morning show. Okay. A couple channels. One is Mike Vinyl Spiral. Mike Vinyl. Mike Vinyl Spiral. He's out of um, the UK. Has 62 subs. He's been uh, just like so many, a big wide variety of different things that he likes, that he enjoys. Uh, you know, a lot of it's more UK oriented, uh, but yet the music is stuff that we all know. Uh, doing a really nice job. Been enjoying that one a lot. Another one's Andy Ford. Andy Ford. He has 36 subs. He's been doing an interesting thing on um, 
post rock and really kind of digging into some of these albums, uh, especially from the 90s and stuff. And uh, it's really worth take, taking a look at. And he also goes out, he shows some of his new stuff. And, and another new one, a brand new channel is SC Juicy, J U I S Y. Uh, again, you can see it there. SC Juicy, I might be saying that wrong. He has 34 subs. That is uh, Marco from Munich. I like that. Marco from Munich. Uh, so, Germany and just started. And he's, you know, getting his legs, getting his uh, sea legs, shall we say, on the vinyl community. Uh, and been very nice. Uh, he's uh, doing a great job. So, three brand new channels. Uh, for the shirt this week, we got Grandpa, the man, the myth. The bad influence. You can't see that the bad influence my son gave uh, for my birthday. Uh, Aiden, my grandson, gave me that. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. At uh, three months now, um, almost three months old, he can pick out shirts like this. So great job, Aiden. Uh, and uh, he's starting to smile, so it's been nice. All right, so we're going now. Let's just talk music. We're going to begin with just a classic. This walked into my uh, local record store. And at first I didn't get it, but I went back and eventually I got it. Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains and Jar of Flies and Sap, an EP. This, uh, as anybody, you know, that was into 90s rock understands, this is a classic. And it's a, a banger of an album. And it has like flies and that on there. Now, the cat, it's spring is coming, so the cat's beginning to shed, which means there's hair popping all over the place. So, Alice in Chains was formed in 87, uh, broke up in 02, basically, because one of the members had died and wasn't worth going on, though they did reform in 03, and they've um, tried to keep it going. Uh, it's Grunge, they, they were one of the beginning of the grunge, alt metal, you could say, um, hard rock type band. Uh, and uh, they were, you know, what, what really set them apart was it was this double vocalist. They had two people that could sing and they both usually sang songs together in the beautiful harmonies. And was uh, Lane Staley, I believe I'm saying that right. I'm sure I'm not. And um, and uh, was it Jer Jerry Cantrell? And they would just, their, and their, their harmonies are really good. And I remember I bought this when it came out in CD. It's just one of those that I listened to a few times, but put it back and never thought about it. I, after re-listening to this, I goes, man, I really, really enjoyed this thing. Now, when they started, they called themselves Sleaze. And I guess they decided, you know what, we maybe we need another band name instead of call Sleaze. So they're sitting there, they're, and someone comes up with, they're just talking, probably drinking a lot, probably smoking a lot, whatever. And someone says, what about Welcome to Wonderland? Well, that's pretty cool, Welcome to Wonderland. So they start talking more, and they start, well, let's, what if, what if, what if, okay, Welcome to Wonderland, what if, well, it's Alice, why not? Alice in Chains. They go, wow, that's cool. And they go, yeah, it's like if we put her in bondage, you know, and it's stuff like that. And they go, yeah, so it's Alice in Chains. Well, a lawyer's record company, someone else says, you know, the parents are really going to be pissed about that. And that's probably not going to be your best. So you need to change that up. Okay, so Alice in, letter N, chains. Well, we now know it was about her being in bondage. So, okay, hey, <laughs> and now the rest of the story. So, uh, that's what you get with this. Uh, this album is the fourth album. Again, it's an EP, though, but it's the fourth. It, it, it really they began changing. They, here, it, it, they, it began to go, um, softened up shall we say it was there's more melody involved with this album that was i mean easily listened to it came out in um, 1993 it's it's tuneful i think that's the best thing i could do but it it also there is um 
it's it's kind of a sorrowful album shall we say it deals it's gorgeous but sorrowful i the the subject matters it deals with loneliness self-imposed isolation it deals with um oh what um lost human contact basically this was a pre-COVID album. This was a COVID album before COVID happened. I mean, it's perfect for times of COVID. <laughs> he's an only crowd. Uh, the the singing on it is um, great. Uh, Cantrell's guitar work is really varied, and he does a variety of different guitar tones. And it's just gorgeous, and they add occasional strings to it. So they're trying to really expand. I Stay Away was uh, one of the numbers, and it's just it's beautiful how they sing but it's also just a really great rocker no excuses incredible harmonizing this was really this, this was a great i really enjoyed this uh again a cd that i had that i didn't get into 30 years later it's like and it is 30 years later wow so great to get an original of that Brand new music. Guided by Voices. I have never had a Guided by Voices in vinyl. I had a few CDs, but never in vinyl. Okay, wait, I wonder if there's, I should see, was there any other extra in that thing? Oh, we got a picture there. Yeah. Not much else. Just words. Okay, sometimes there's extras in these, and of course I miss out, and I don't really look. Like, here we go, here we go, Guided by Voices, all right. We have words. All right, big deal. Okay, so that, that was worth it, wasn't it? Okay, Guided by Voices. And this is the group of Robert Pollard and a cast of hundreds. They formed in, like, 83... Broke up in 04, started up again in 16, and are still going. And they're out of Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio, funk capital of the world, and guided by voices. The music, it's ever-changing. Alt-rock, indie rock, garage rock, prog rock. They've done 38 albums. Last year, they did three albums. This year, this year, 2023, they've done two albums already. Crazy. Just crazy. Now, how did I, why did I, I've never bought it Guided by Voices. I've never even really thought about it. But I bought an Uncut Magazine, and they give you a free sampler. And on here, they had a song from this. And I'm just listening, wow, that is a really neat song. What is that song? And I look at it, Guided by Voices, really? So I bought it. And it, it's, it's a long song. Because it's more like Prague. So the name of this album is La La Land. Not the movie. Not the soundtrack. La La Land. And it is, excuse me, a variety of different things. Um, another, let's see, you have stuff like uh, Begins With Another Day to Heal. And that just, it starts it off. And it's just this driving banger of a song with these crunchy drums. Huge power chords are happening. Then it goes into... Ballroom, what's it? Ballroom Etiquette, which is like the, the third song on, on here. And um, it it has just these gorgeous, be um, beautiful type harmonies that are happening. Beautiful stuff. Uh, you have, the, then it starts getting longer. You have Slowly on the Wheel, which is a six minute uh, one. And that really starts to bring more of the prog. Lots of time changes, um, faster, slower, really changes things up. And it's, it's, it's really interesting. I'm going to play a, a a, a sample from that. Uh, that's the song that caught my attention. Uh, just very interesting. Different album, 
by Guided by Voices, a band that keeps changing things up and trying to keep up with uh, King Gizzard, Lizard, Wizard as how many albums can we put out in a year? Will I buy a lot of Guided by Voices? No, I probably won't. Uh, will this be my top 10 it may probably not. I mean, it's 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 a long ways to go. Did I like it? Yes, I did. I I enjoyed it, um, and some of the songs are really catchy. the The vocals are a little different, but not bad. Okay, next we have Michael P. Dawson. He has a channel. Please check out, if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, look at him, Michael P. Dawson. Uh, he is a musician. He's a multi-instrumentalist. He's made albums. You can find him on Bandcamp. And uh, But the last time I bought one from him, he, he sent me three other albums. And I, I've watched Michael for... Uh, since I've been in the VC, and he's just a guy I really, really um, appreciate and respect. Um, on Facebook, he puts the guy has is he's a great photographer, but he gave me three albums when I bought that. This was one of them, and uh, this this comes in a variety. This this one here, Third World, and I uh, Kate Keta I I Keta yeah, whatever, yeah. Uh, it comes, there's a variety of different covers with this thing. But this was uh, done with uh, Steve Winwood along with um, two other, uh, Abu Lasiamio and Remy Kabaka, who does the singing on it and um, wrote, wrote, wrote the songs. So this was, uh, Steve Winwood made this. It was in between, okay, traffic had ended. He hadn't started a solo career, so what to do? Let's go to Africa, because in the 70s, that was kind of a big thing to do. You know, Ginger Baker was already there. And they, um, he, he made this. And it is, uh, you know, the, the very first song on, on here, uh, which now I can't, Happy Vibes. Man, that thing just rocks. And Winwood's guitar playing is excellent. Really good stuff. But then there's uh, the, the third song, Black Beauty funky funky as all get out there's flute going on in there really neat thing side two is just one particular song this was fun stuff uh, really enjoyed it great music um, from Winwood <laughs> Also sent me Haydn. Haydn? I think it's said Haydn. That's what I've always said my whole life. That doesn't mean it's right because I just well, I think that's how it's, I think that's how you say it. No one's ever told me different. But Joseph Haydn. Born seventeen thirty-two, died in eighteen oh nine from Austria. Haydn is Let's say he is the John the Baptist to Mozart being Jesus Christ. He's the second dude, second fiddle. But, you know, Mozart was flighty. Haydn was very, you know, he, he wasn't, wasn't out there being crazy. You know, they were out there doing things at the same time. His nickname was Papa Joe. But here's the thing. He was a great revolutionary of classical music. He changed so much when you think of song structure. You think of harmony. You think of melody. He really did a lot of change. He wrote 104 symphonies. 104. For 30 years, he worked for a Hungarian prince. And 
And he he wrote and wrote and wrote because, you know, when you worked for, you know, at that time, a classical person had to work generally for a noble person. They didn't, you didn't have a jukebox. You didn't have a radio. You want music? I want something new. Give me a new song. Give me a new song. Give me a new song. You know what? You think you go into writer's block, people talk about, oh, God, it's taking me three years to write. You didn't get writer's block back then or you're fired because you had to come up with new music constantly. We're going to have a party. We need some new music. Get it going. That's what happened. So 104 symphonies. Now, of course, you have uh, millions of other types of things he wrote, including operas. But uh, so really interesting. It was from 1757 to 1795, actually, that he wrote all 104 symphonies. King Gizzard, Lizard, Wizard, look out. This guy was doing it first. Okay. Uh, but on here, we have the 103rd Symphony, which is called the, um, what's it? It's, it's called the, the drum roll. And it just starts off this drum roll, then it gets quiet, and then it builds again. One thing about Haydn, what he did is he would start it fast. Then he would, he, he usually did four movements. Four movements was his deal. First movement, fast. Second movement, slow. Third and fourth movement, both fast. And this was different, something that people weren't used to. Uh, but it sounds great. He has great music. It's melodic. It's easy to listen to. It's just fun. It's happy music for the most part. Really great to have this. Um, fantastic. I love this guy. I, But I'm not going to try to collect all the symphonies. <laughs> And then he switched, uh, sent me switched on Bach 2. Uh, the album that uh, was done by um, Walter Carlos, or now Wendy Carlos. Actually, uh, when he did this, uh, well, when she did this, she already had had a sex change, but nobody knew about it. Uh, it just, um, Wendy Walter was a, uh, was, was, a phys uh, was uh, majored in physics, but also music and fell in love with the Moog and did Switched on Bach. Well, this is Switched on Bach 2. What's beauty on here is they do the brand, side two is the Brandenburg Concerto number no. five. I was raised on the Brandenburg Concertos. My dad adored the Brandenburg Concertos. I love, to this day, I love Bach. I think Bach's just the best. Bach is best. And, and so it's fun to listen to. Again, Moog, classical. Everyone knows it. So... Record Store Day from last year. <laughs> it's, you know, I thought, I need to really get show that Record Store Day stuff I bought. I just haven't talked about it. I've listened to it ages ago. I've listened to it in between, but never shown it. So we had this one here. It's called The Salvation Army. And it was, that was the name of the band, Salvation Army. It's the self-titled Salvation Army. They got sued for calling themselves the Salvation Army because the Salvation Army didn't like that. So they changed their name to the Three O'Clock, which is one of those huge Paisley Underground bands. And uh, Michael Quercio, I believe, he actually coined the phrase, um, Paisley Underground, which is what they called the movement, the Paisley Underground. And it was the L.A. music scene that was going on. And you had like the Bangles, the Dream Syndicate, you had Green on Red, were all part of this. And it was really taking what was happening back in the 60s, the jangly sound of the birds, changing it, making it new again for the 80s. Uh, this is kind of like a, there's a three-piece psychedelic pop band. And it's just filled with these um, kind of neo-psych type guitar sounds happening, swirls, and very much pop vocals. Uh, you know, and when you listen to some of these songs, you kind of get an idea. For instance, while we were in your room talking to your wall. Well, that kind of tells you what's going to be happening. <laughs> I mean, okay, right? Uh, you know, a little bit trippy. You know, she turns to flowers. Uh, you know, again, just different. 
this is great stuff. I, I like the Three O'Clock. I love the Paisley Underground movement. This particular album, it's it's a little muddy. I, I thought the production isn't that great on it. It's not really crisp, but it's an important album if you like the Paisley Underground and you like the Three O'Clock. So this was last record store day. I still see it in stores. Uh, if you like that type of music, you really can't go wrong with it. Uh, it's well worth getting and nothing extra in there, which should be. Also, last record store day, I bought the Jazz Dispensary. It was okay. I, I I had a few of these before the flood. After the flood, I thought, nah, you know what? I've been collecting them all. Now I don't have them all, so I stopped. Well, this one sounded neat. Haunted High, a surreal soundtrack for exploration to the furthest depths of outer space of one's mind. Featuring Moonshots by um, Mongo Santa Maria, Brenda Lewis, that we have um, Cannonball Adley, Woody Herman, uh, McCoy Tyler, Tyner. So I thought, oh, all right, well, let's give that a shot. And hey, the artwork's cool, but I really wasn't that impressed. I, I don't know what, I, I still can't figure out what's haunted, moon. No, I, I, I didn't get any of that off of it. So um, I think I had false advertising going on. Is the music good? Yes, it's good. Is it uh, something that is just memorable that you're going to go back to for me? No. Yeah. <laughs> Final one, for those that like hardcore, you want your hardcore punk, we have Marginal Man. A uh, group formed in D.C., formed in 82, broke up in 88. Uh, good old D.C. hardcore punk, which is huge, huge, huge deal. Uh, this, what made this group different is they featured two guitars. And um, they, it's... It's not as hardcore as some. You know, there's some that there's a screaming, it's so loud, it's blaring, working toward that speed tempo. I found this was more mid-tempo on, on this album. And actually, they were um, more restrained vocals for the most part. It doesn't have, like, all the anger that some has, or the feeling of all that anger. There, I mean, still, it's hard pounding music, but it's just not over the top. I really couldn't find a lot about about this group as I as I was looking, but it was just something I saw in the bands. I didn't know what it was. I just thought, oh, that looks interesting from the '80s. Let's give this thing a shot, and found out, you know, it's just um, one of those um, hardcore punk groups out of DC. So it's a cool pickup, something really different. Uh, that I can't tell you a whole lot about. Perfect. But they stand in line to try that ladder just one more time. So she laughed. It's incomplete. It's Missy Rose to protect the elite. So why? And that's what we got this week. Uh, I think the midweek we're going to talk. I'm going to talk about Queen. Love it, hate it. I I, I struggle with Queen. I I do. I like some of Queen. Some of it I I just don't get. So I will, we'll go through what what I have on what albums. That's all. Check out podcast and um, have yourself a great week. Bye. <laughs>